What is up guys? My name is Nicholas Carcel. Welcome back to another video. Today we recap the Toronto Maple Leafs preseason and how they did the good standout players and the players that weren't so good in the preseason. So starting off with the Leafs themselves, they actually went 5-1 and one on the year and they played pretty good. They played some pretty good hockey. It was very impressive. Uh, a lot of guys that were not on the roster before who have been maybe traded or signed as free agents made their mark this preseason. So it was really good to see some fresh new faces on the club, to see some skills and standout, standout players and aggression and everything kind of fit into place in the beginning of the first six games of the season. So that was really nice to see for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right now we're going to talk about some standout players for the Toronto Maple Leafs. In the preseason, the people that I think stood out the most, some guys that didn't stand out, and then I'll predict the roster for the first game of the season with a little bit of adjustments. So the first standout player I have is Michael Bunting. Now, Michael Bunting had four goals and actually three power play goals. He was plus minus of zero on the season. Michael Bunting played really, really good for his first couple games as a Toronto Maple Leaf. He only played three games and he he basically had a goal per game. And sorry, he played four games. He basically had a goal per game. It it was a really good start to the preseason for Michael Bunting. Nick Ritchie, on the other hand, also had a terrific preseason. Three goals, one fight. He had a fight against the Montreal Canadiens in the second last game and 16 shots by Nick Ritchie, 16 of them. He was, he was unstoppable. Nick Ritchie was putting up numbers and doing really well on the ice. He had a good physical presence on the ice, but he also could show some of his goal scoring and also some of his aggression at the same time. So that was really interesting to see from Nick Ritchie. And I'm sure Nick Ritchie has a safe spot in the top six this season. He's going to be very interesting to watch as a Toronto Maple Leaf. Some other guys that could rack up the assists, I had Michael Amadio, Willie Nylander, and Josh Hosang. Now, Michael Amadio had a goal and three assists in four games and had a plus minus of three. Michael Amadio did a fantastic job in this preseason, and he's definitely, in my opinion, earned himself the roster spot. Possibly a fourth liner for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We'll have to see. Michael Amadio knows he could play center, but he could also play wing at the same time. He's fast, he's good with the puck, and he knows exactly where to give it to at the moment of time. So that's one good thing about Michael Amadio. William Nylander, four assists, plus or minus a four, and the guy was killing penalties. The guy was on the power play, but he was also killing penalties. This is something very interesting for William Nylander that we have not seen up to this point. He's on the PK, and he's doing his job as a penalty killer. He was very decent on the penalty kill. It's interesting to see William Nylander in that spot. It's something we've never seen him before for the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. And if he's able to convert into a strong penalty killer for Toronto Maple Leafs, that $6.9 million is looking like a little bit of an underpay, isn't it? Josh Hosang, on the other hand, had four assists. And he was a plus minus a zero. Josh Hosang, he kind of goes undiscovered in this preseason considering he's already been transferred to Toronto Marlies on a one-year deal. Look, Josh Hosang is going to need some time. And the guy is 25 years old, so there's no reason he can't sign a contract mid-season with the Toronto Maple Leafs. But right now, he's going to stick with the Marlies. Four assists and three games for Josh Hosang. He did a fantastic job. Then we had to some of the D-men who were standout players. And I got TJ Brody, four assists, three plus minus. Really, really good from TJ Brody. He's obviously showing why he can be one of the top two defensemen on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Timothy Liljegren, plus two, played on the penalty kill and he played on the power play. Liljegren, he's a good all-around guy. He can do everything. He can kill penalties. He can be on the power play to support. And he can also get a couple points here and there. And that's what's so good about Timothy Liljegren. No, he did not get any points in the preseason, but it's kind of hard to judge a defenseman on six games. You really have to watch them develop as a defenseman. We've been watching Liljegren develop for that defenseman defensive position for years to come. And finally, it's looking like he's going to mesh into his spot on Toronto Maple Leafs. And right now, he looks like he's a 7th D-man for the Leafs. 
but hopefully in time that will change and i think Lilgren will finally get his opportunity very soon so i'm hoping to see timothy Lilgren in a couple games this season maybe 20 games maybe he gets himself to an nhl contract we'll have to see Lilgren, you're looking good buddy and then i have carl dahlstrom who had two assists and was plus three in the preseason again another guy that goes undiscovered because of what he did last year this year he looked fantastic in preseason and quite honestly that's my eighth guy right there if i'm looking to at kyle dubas and i'm saying okay we got our number six decided between rasmus sandin and travis dermott now you got timothy Lilligren in that seventh spot who's going to be in that eighth spot eighth spot that's got to be someone and in my opinion that's Carl Dahlstrom. He did a terrific job. Maybe Alex Biega because he's got NHL experience and he's a little bit more aggressive of a player. But I think Carl Dahlstrom would be a great 8th spot considering he did so well in the plus minus category. And that's something that Leafs defenseman has struggled over years of time. So I didn't actually put any goalies in the standout category. One standout would be Peter Mrazek. But we all know what Peter Mrazek is capable of. Yes, he made a terrific save against the Montreal Canadiens in that 5-2 loss. He played incredible in that game, and they ended up losing the game. But it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because Peter Mrazek won the next game against the Montreal Canadiens. We know what we're getting from Peter Mrazek, and he gave us exactly what we wanted to get from him. So, that's the only goalie that stood out for me. No one else really on the Leafs roster made their mark. As a rookie goalie, no one really made their mark. Disappointing players, in my opinion. I have three guys, and that is Nick Robertson, Andrej Kase, and Alex Kerfoot. Now, Nick Robertson, I'm disappointed, not because he did something wrong, because he didn't do anything right. And he's kind of in that middle ground where he was doing so good in training camp. He was one of the best players in training camp, scoring goals like crazy. He gets to the big stage, and he puts up zero points. Zero plus minus, lots of zeros for Nick Robertson in this preseason. Sometimes that's a good thing, but in the case where you have to make your mark, it wasn't too good. I wasn't impressed from Nick Robertson, and he's most likely going to be in the AHL for majority of this season, but only time will tell. He's going to be playing hockey this year, so we're going to have to see. Andrej Kase, one goal, one assist. It's decent, but I expected, I expected more from Kase, considering what he was on the Anaheim Ducks. He then went to the Boston Bruins. Didn't do too well there. And I was expecting him to rebound on the Maple Leafs. Six games in. Costley played four games. Had a goal and assist. Not too terrible. But compared to other players in the roster. He didn't play as good. Another guy. Alex Kerfoot. Zero points. He was minus one on the preseason. I, I don't mean to harp on Kerfoot. But. Kerfoot, you're also battling for a job, man. I understand you're a third-line center. And in the playoffs last year, you were bar none the best player on the team. But what, now that we got David Kampf, you got to battle for your spot. You got to battle for your spot at that third-line center. Because right now, I got you on the left wing to David Kampf. I think he's doing a little bit better than you in the preseason. Plus, David Kampf put up two points in the preseason with a goal assist. So, he did terrific, David Kampf. So ladies and gentlemen, these are my starting lines for the beginning of the season. And yes, I have Austin Matthews up there. These are not my lines for the first game, for the first puck drop. These are my lines, just what I think is going to be for the season. Right now I have Ilya Mikheyev out because he is 7-8 to eight weeks away. So I did not decide to include him in the lineup because most likely for the rest of the season he will not be included in the lineup unless he makes a center performance. It's hard to put a guy in the lineup that's injured all the time. Austin Matthews with Mitch Marner and Michael Bunting. I think Bunting made a really good case of why he can be that starting left winger for Ma Matthews and Marner. I really thought about Nick Ritchie, but the more you look at that second line with John Tavares, Nylander, Nick Ritchie, that's a, that's a scary line. That's a really scary line, and I like the look of it. I think John Tavares is really going to like Nick Ritchie, whereas I think Michael Bunting will appreciate Matthews and Marner a little bit more than Nick Ritchie would. Then I got David Kampf, Andrej Kase, and Alex Kerfoot, the K-line. And uh, no, I, I won't say the 3K-line because that is not, that's offensive. <laughs> and uh, no, it's the K-line. Yeah, Alexander Kerfoot, Kampf, and Kase, 
the three together. They're going to be a pretty decent line, I think. I think Camp can definitely win a, a bunch of big face-offs for this line. Kose, yes, he's a piece of glass. But at the end of the day, he can put the puck in the net. So that's really good. And then Kerfoot, he's a setup guy. This line kind of reminds me of that Patrick Hornquist, Kessel, and uh, Nick Bonino line. It's not exactly like the HBK line because, goodness, that line was so fantastic. But it's a little bit lower, but it's almost there. It's pretty good. And then Jason Spezza, Wayne Simmons, Pierre Engvall. I just put the guys from last year in this line. Looked like it was going to stick together. Morgan Riley, TJ Brody, Jake Muzzin, Justin Hall, Rasmus Sandin, and I have Travis Dermott on his off. I know they were practicing Dermott on his left side, but I think for the first game, they'll probably play Dermott on his off went offside just because Sandin is so used to playing that left side. And Rasmus Sandin is kind of a younger guy, so they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the younger kid. Then Jack Campbell as my starter, Peter Morazic as the backup, and I used to have as my extra skaters Adam Brooks, but unfortunately he has recently been moved to the Montreal Canadiens, claimed off waivers. So we got Timothy Lilligren, Michael Amadio, Curtis Gabriel, Josh Hose, and Carl Dahlstrom. So that's my preseason recap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe for more of these videos. And please make sure to turn on your post notifications to get notified when these videos do come out. One more thing, please, please, please make sure to share this video with your friends and family. It helps me a lot, guys, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.